It's right before 2 John, and 2 John's right before 3 John. 1 John chapter 5. Hallelujah. Well, if you could read my emails, my text, if you could check out the communication I get on Messenger, then this title might mean something to you. The title of today's message is Help Pastor the Devil's After Me. Amen. Help, Pastor, the devil's after me. It's funny how we blame so much stuff on him, isn't it? Amen. So we want to talk a little bit as we move toward the 31st. And by the way, next Sunday, uh, as in, again, I, this is, and not tooting on my horn at all, this is a Pastor Appreciation Month. I have bought pastors lunches, amen, this week. I, almost every pastor in Crosby, I bought them lunch. I've just uh, tried to do things for other pastors. I've, I've loved on my pastor, and uh, I appreciate the appreciation you guys have shown me. I was telling my pastor just already the little things I've gotten and received, and even if they hurt me, I appreciate all the things that you've done for me. Amen. I've got Alabama drink stands, and somebody put a new chair in my office and didn't tell me who they were, and just little stuff like that. And, and not that my chair was bad. It just had tape all over it, and uh, it would stick to my arms when I raised them. And, uh, and finally somebody noticed, you know, pastor needs a chair. And so if somebody slid a chair. So little stuff like that means so much, and, and uh, food and things of that nature. But it's honest in my heart, if uh, you did anything for me, if you could, uh, anybody that considers me their pastor, I'd love to have you in church next Sunday. So those that are watching online, and you can let people know that. I know all of you say, well, we're here almost every Sunday, and, and I know that. But there are a lot of people that consider me that. Wouldn't it be nice for me to have an opportunity to see just a little bit of what my funeral might look like? Come on. Can I get an amen? I mean, all the people that you've never seen or hadn't seen in a long time, and there's a funeral, you ain't there, but they show up. Would it be nice for them to show up just one time before you go? Oh. Amen. So that's kind of where I'm going with this thought. It would be a, it'd be a neat thing to see what could happen next week. So I'm going to just kind of put the word out there. Help, Pastor. The, the devil's first found in the book of Genesis. We find him along with Adam and Eve and, of course, the, the eating of the fruit and the deception and all of that. So now we see him moving through Scripture. And when I walk through it, I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me well. Uh, when you look at him, he is not omniscient. When I use the word omniscient, I'm telling you that he is not everywhere. He's not present everywhere. Who is omniscient? God is omniscient. Amen. God is everywhere. God is found here. He's found in, uh, uh, all over the United States, all over the world. He's in your heart. There's something about the presence of God. He is omniscient. Satan is an entity, and he is not everywhere. The other thing he's not, he's not omnipotent. He's not all-powerful. Where does he get his power from as often we give it to him? We release ourselves to him or in our mind. We'll talk about that in a minute, how the battlefield's here, and we release things over to him. There's a deception. I've, I've said this for years. He's had 5,000 years practice on humanity. You're only here for, you know, 30 to 80 years at best, hallelujah, and, and then you're gone. But he's always had the same practice with a whole new group of people. He uses the same stuff, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So understand he's not omniscient and he's not om omnipotent. He's not all powerful. But our God's all powerful. Can I get an amen? Oh, I could go somewhere with that one right there. The Bible teaches us in John 10 10, he came to steal, to kill, and destroy. Those are the three motives that he has here to kill, to steal, and destroy. I'm telling you this is because oftentimes when you forget who the devil is, you start blaming things on people. You start blaming things on, on yourself, and you forget that there's another entity involved in this. Now, when I mentioned to you that he is not uh, omniscient, he's not all-powerful, but he does rule a world. He does rule the powers of the air. He, there, there are things about him that you need to know that he, there are devils or demons or imps or whatever you want to call it that are under his command. So understand, he does. He possessed Judas, the Bible teaches us, uh, that, that Satan had entered into him and caused him to be a little more the way he was. John saw Satan as the prince in the power of the air. Amen. First John 5, verse 19, I'll just let you stay seated this morning. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. 
And we are in him who is true by being in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and the eternal life. When John mentions this, he tells us that this devil, my friend, it controls the, the, um, the world. And when I say the world, I'm not talking about earth. I'm talking about that which is between here and heaven. He has a control over that. When you recognize that, then you start understanding all the nonsense we've seen over the last few years in the United States. That people are being influenced by demonic uh, spirit attitudes. Amen. I, I could have went into the newspaper today and showed you over and over. A mother does this to her child. A man did this to his child. Amen. Father turned on his son. Son turned on his father. I can walk you through all through the news and show you your Bible. Amen. Well, this is, is what's happening right now in our world. The Apostle Paul teaches that Satan is the God of this age. The cosmos or the unredeemed world, if you would, is at the present under Satan's power. Satan is now the commander of the spiritual powers of the air, Ephesians 2.2, 2, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Now, before you were born again, you were literally being influenced by Satan. Now, I know when you witness to people, you can't go tell them you're a devil. You act like the devil. Your daddy's the devil. Amen. That's not a proper witnessing tool. But what you need to remind yourself is, is that there was a time you were under that kind of influence. Amen. It affected the way you acted in, in your nature. It leads to forces of evil in heavenly realms, Ephesians 6, 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the principalities, the powers of darkness in this world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So we in a fight. Everybody say fight. I mean, it's going to be a constant fight. We, we have got, we have flipped this thing. I was with a man, like I said yesterday, who spent thir about 30 years in Africa, and now we realize that America is falling into a post-Christian era. In other words, there are more people in America that need to be discipled and witnessed and born again in our colleges, in our schools, in our workplaces than ever before. There are people that are falling away from God. Amen. They've given up on waiting on Jesus to show up, evidently, or they fell back into the forces of darkness. There's always going to be a darkness, and you got to fight that. Everybody say fight. fight. you got to fight it. you, you got to stand against it, and you need to understand who you're fighting against. John, you know, if I want to know uh, my enemy, i I got I to figure him out. i got to learn him so I can deal with life a little bit better. John 14, 28, you heard me say I am going away, and I'm coming back to you. And if you, uh, oh, let me back up. John 12, 31, Jesus talking. Now, now is the time, the judgment on this world, and now the prince of this world is, will be driven out. John 14, 28. You heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you'd be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. He's talking to his disciples. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. But he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly that my Father has commanded me. I read that and I thought, hold on, Jesus said when the devil comes, it'll prove to you I love you. You know, sometimes you've got to recognize how bad something is to recognize how good you got it. Amen. When I see how bad the devil is and Satan and the satanic forces and the wicked and the evil, and then I back up and I realize, you know, I'll tell you this, Jesus loves me. Amen. He did all this so I would understand he loves me like that. He rescued me. He pulled me out. And when you see the word the world in the scripture here, it can designate all that is hostile, rebellious, and opposed to God. Now let's get into our passage here. I'm going to stay on a verse here for a little while. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Remember, it's Peter talking. Pete's gone through a lot of stuff with Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And I went through this week and I read every one of the, uh, the apostles, how they died. Thomas and all. And I, I watched, uh, you know, Peter being crucified upside down. Uh, I was reading a commentary with a pastor that said that uh, when Paul was beaten, 39 lashes, shipwrecked three times, in jail, and a young charismatic man said, well, Paul must not have had a lot of faith. It's amazing how we look at people that are going through stuff and we think to ourselves, well, if they had more faith, they wouldn't be going through that. If they had more faith, he wouldn't need them glasses. If he had more faith, his marriage wouldn't be that way. If they had more faith, you, you know the faith you got to have to go through the struggles in life and keep a hope in God? 
amen, to stand under pressure and to deal with nonsense of some Christians that believe that if you're going through something that evidently the devil's after you and it was you that messed up. We're going to talk about us messing up here in just a second, but listen to Peter. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Has the devil ever tried to use your past against you? Have you ever heard it brought back up into your ears that what happened was because of your own actions? That you don't even try to ask God to help you because you know you got yourself in this mess all by yourself. And now you're going to have to get out of it by yourself because God won't help you. The devil talked to you. God won't help you because you're reaping exactly what you've sown. Have you ever heard that whispered in your ear by a devil? If it was whispered in your ear, I'm telling you it was by a devil. Amen. Because God ain't going to do that to you. Can I get an amen? If you've ever heard these kinds of accusations from the devil, you've got to hear that scripture again out of 5.8 of Peter. Be sober, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. The word vigilant here means to be on your guard, to be watchful, to be attentive. Many of us, we, we on guard Sunday morning at 8.30. But he, he saw him about 24-7, stay on your guard to be vigilant, amen, to, to watch after. It tells us that we must be on high alert against an enemy who is seeking to gain access to our lives. As we move toward the 31st, I want to remind you, stay on your guard. Amen. Of course, we're going to have a trunk and treat. We're going to give a secure place for the kids to get, get candy and things of that nature. But they're still going to be on our guard. Amen. They're still watching out because there are spiritual forces at work. Always trying to trip you up and to get, because that devil don't want you going to heaven. Amen. The attitude of a person who is unwavering in his commitment, this person has to be watchful, wide awake, and on the lookout. That's why when I hear about, you know, guys, I, and I don't get to make it over here all these Tuesdays, but when you pray, there's something about praying that keeps you alert. When you ain't praying, you're not alert. You're not paying attention. My pastor has this thing about, man, he is a prayer warrior. Pastor Mike will pray. Uh, all, he prays all the time. He talks to me about prayer. He convicts me with the way he talks to me about prayer. Amen. I, I say, why can't, can't, why can't we talk about football? No, he wants to talk about prayer. Amen. He's always about prayer. Well, what about them Astros? He's in St. Louis. He don't care about them Astros. He's a Cardinal fan. Amen. So, so he just won't talk about prayer. That prayer that, that Jesus taught, that said, don't, you know, in Gethsemane, he told him, don't sleep, guys. Stay awake and pray with me. Because when you pray, you stay alert. So Peter goes on to say to us, he says, now, be vigilant, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary. That word adversary is, is from a Greek word that is used like a prosecuting lawyer. Now, I've only had a little bit to do with court and uh, jail. And I've dealt with lawyers, and I can tell you something. I don't like them. And as long I have pastored, listen, for almost 30 years, and only one time have I ever had a lawyer in church. I've had doctors. I've had police. I've had uh, nurses. But I'm still looking for a good lawyer. I just, I'm looking for it. If you're, if you're a lawyer, please let me know. But I'd love to get a lawyer in church, a really good lawyer who loves Jesus. Can I get an amen? I'm pulling, I'm pulling for you, man. I'm trying to find a lawyer out there that'd come to church. I don't know. I have yet 30 years, one lawyer, and they backslid. It's okay. They go to the other church. So this word is used as a picture of a prosecutor who brought offenders to court. So he said, your, your enemy is, is, is like an adversary. He's like a lawyer. That's who the devil is. And he argues vehemently against you. And then they would send him off to prison. So now Peter uses this word to direct and depict the way the devil may try to overtake us. Peter's telling us that when the devil strikes, he often acts like a lawyer. Amen. Who tries to bring us down by prosecuting us with the facts of our past sins and our mistakes. Now, the enemy drags up facts from your past and, and reminds us of our former failures. Then he vigorously tries to convince us that we deserve to to be in the mess that we're in. The devil is successful in his prosecution. Next thing you know, we'll be behind bars. We'll, we'll, we'll put ourselves behind bars. It, listen to me. He never uses a lie about it because if he did, we would know it. But he uses the truth. It's terrible when the devil uses the truth. Can I get an amen? 
because he's basically a liar in, in his whole attitude. So it's unfortunate that many believers assist the devil in his efforts to prosecute them. Amen. It's like you help the devil out. For instance, many people have money problems because they have spent too much money or used their credit card way beyond the limit of what they could afford. Others get sick in the wintertime because they were not dressed properly when they went out. Marriages got into trouble because they didn't spend enough time together. Amen. It happens. But the truth is people usually help out the enemy a little along the way. The enemy is in me. That's what the enemy is. He's in me. So I'm actually helping the devil out whenever I agree with him like this. So listen to me. I don't want to give God some praise here, but when we sin and we do wrong, his grace is there to forgive us and to restore us. But the devil is also there. He, he's always, and again, he's not, he's, not, um, he's not everywhere, but there's a spirit about it. I've often said the devil has never been to Crosby, Texas because we've never done enough for God to get him here. It's an indictment against us as the church here. We'd rather fight one another, accuse one another, put down one another. So why do we need the devil to ever come here? Amen. So if we ever want to get him here, we got to get after some things for God. If you want to find where the devil is, find where the greatest move of God is going on. Because that's what he's going to be fighting. But he's still got imps and power, and he's still dealing with stuff. So the enemy remembers every innocent mistake made along the way. And like a prosecutor or adversary, amen, he comes to accuse you. Like a lawyer, he argues his point in your mind and to the Father. You're in this mess because of your own dumb mistakes. Mm -hmm. You're reaping what you sow. There's no way you can get out of this mess. You're, you're paying for your past. Your kids are a mess because you failed as a parent. These are things that I fight. Uh, you're, you're going to go bankrupt because you spent too much money on worthless things. You've you destroyed all your friendships because you weren't a good friend. Sometimes the devil is accurate in what he's telling you. That's what I hate about it. Amen. It may be true that you created this mess, but. Everybody say, but. But you must never forget what David said in Psalm 103, verse 4. He redeems your, your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. He redeems you from destruction. Amen. All the things that we did do. Yes, we did. We made a mess. Yes, we, we, we reaped what we sowed. Yes, we, we made some mistakes. Yes, we overspent. Yes, we overdone some stuff. And yet God, yet God, he delivered us from our destruction. Amen. He crowns you with love and compassion. God wants to snatch you out of the power of darkness and get you over into the realm of life and light where past sin won't continue to exert its influence upon you. Colossians 1.13, for he rescued us from the dominion of darkness. He brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. A really good movie is when you, something gets rescued, when it gets pulled out of something. Amen. And God rescued rescued you out of darkness. He pulled you out of the mess you were in. Amen. He brought you over into a place with his dear son in a place of light. That's the grace and the goodness of God. Can I get an amen? Amen. But if you keep dwelling on the accusations that the enemy is speaking against you in your mind, you'll find yourself in trouble pretty quick. Listen, the devil as a roaring lion, as one, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Have you ever heard lions when they're hungry? Oh, man, they got a roar. They, they, I mean, they, they, they are roar. It's deafening when they roar. Peter says that is what it's like when this devil starts attacking your mind. Your mind is so filled with the roars of the enemy's accusations, you can't hear anything else but those lies that are going on. You'll hear it over and over again. That devil roar, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Get up again. You're going to fail. Try to quit drinking again. You're going to fail. Try to get out of drive. You're going to fail. You, you start to bed. You're going to fail. You're going to fail. You just keep hearing those roars. And then the sad thing is you start agreeing with it. And when you start agreeing with it, you're in trouble. So the word that he, as a lion, roaring to devour, devour, amen. It's a word, and I, boy, this is a sad word. It means to drink, to lick, to slurp up. I got dogs, and I'm telling you, if something hits the floor, they don't care how dirty that floor is. They licking it. They slurping it. Just like a lion. The devil wants to turn you into a mess of liquid emotions and then lick you up until there's nothing left of your life. And that is what he wants to do with you. But you don't have to let him do it. Amen. Scripture, I want to read it to you again. 1 Peter 5, 8. Everything I just said to you, I'm going to put it in one verse. All right? 
everything I said. You must be constantly alert and on your guard. The devil, like an accusing lawyer, will try to charge you with all kinds of arguments and accusations. You need to know that he is like a lion on the prowl, constantly walking around, roaring with a deafening sound, earnestly seeking the kind of person he can completely consume and slurp up. Your life is way too important to keep agreeing with that lawyer. You need to know that there's a, there's a lawyer. And Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send the comforter. And when he comes, he's going to witness of me. This the power of the Holy Ghost in you. When you got born again, the Holy Spirit's there. And, of course, I believed in an infilling and, and a refilling and staying with God and asking him. That's why church to me is so important. The gathering of saints and living life together is so important. I, if we took the devil totally out of the equation, you'd still be wrestling with your flesh. But now we're adding him to it. And it's, let me tell you something, Father. It's almost... Uh, it's not equal. It's what I feel at times. It's not equal. And then God reminds me, son, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world system. That my son died to give you the power over sin, the penalty from sin, and one day I'm going to remove you totally out of sin. So I stand on the Word of God and say, okay, that, that's a devil. Now, now, let me go on here and just read you a little bit. The Scripture, if you keep reading it, says, resist the devil, he'll run from you. Resist him. Resistance simply means that now I'm going to keep standing. After you've done all Ephesians 6, after I've done all to stand, stand. So now I resist him. And when I do, he runs from me. Well, you buck, 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 chicken. I thought you was a lion. I thought you wanted to devour me. I thought you wanted to stand before the Father and accuse me of my past. I thought you were bringing up stuff that I'd done wrong. And yet I resist him, and he runs from me. Now, listen to me. There was a little boy visiting his grandparents on their farm. He was given a slingshot, kind of like a crossbow, to play out in the woods. He practiced in the woods, but he could never hit his target. Getting a little discouraged, he headed back to dinner. Or he was walking back. He saw Grandma's pet duck. Just out of impulse, he pulled that slingshot back and let her fly. Hit the duck square in the head. Killed it. He was shocked and grieved. In a panic, he hid the dead duck in a woodpile. Only to see that his sister was watching him. Sally had seen it all, but she ain't said nothing. After lunch... The next day, Grandma said, Sally, let's wash the dishes. But Sally said, Grandma, Johnny told me that he wanted to help you in the kitchen. <laughs> then she whispered to him, remember the duck? <laughs> so Johnny did the dishes. Later that day, Grandpa asked if the children wanted to go fishing. And Grandma said, I'm sorry, but I need Sally to help me with the supper. Sally just smiled and said, well, that's all right. Uh, Grandma, because Johnny told me he wanted to help in the kitchen again. She whispered again to him, remember the duck. So Sally went fishing. And Johnny stayed home. After several days of Johnny doing both his chores and Sally's, he finally couldn't stand it any longer. He came to Grandma and he confessed he killed the duck. Grandma knelt down and gave him a hug and said, sweetheart, I know. You see, I was standing at the window when I saw you fling that rock, it hit my duck. But because I love you, I forgave you. I was just wondering how long you would let Sally make a slave of you. God's at the window, and he saw it. He observed you. And when you said, God, forgive me, he forgave you. How long are you going to let that devil Sally keep you a prisoner? In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. 
I don't care if you think that devil's after you. You got power in Jesus' name. Greater is he that's in you. You're smart enough. God made you the parent first so that you take care of your kids and pray a hedge around them. Remind them also that they're fighting against principalities and powers and wickedness. And they, they're not just fighting against people, but there's a spirit behind that. Amen. That right there begins to set you free when you deal with people. There are times people will act like Sally, and they'll try to hold things over you and against you, and they'll, they'll accuse you just like that lawyer, that devil himself. But I want to tell you something. I got one that stands before a mediator in heaven and earth. That's Jesus. Amen. And he mediates between me and the Father. I don't care what that devil says. That, that God slaps his hand down on the gavel and says, forgiven. Come on. Forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. If I can get our servant leaders to come up. Amen. Hallelujah. A couple of things. I'll just make these announcements quick here, Pastor David. A few things for you to remember. You'll see them on the overhead. We're praying Tuesday night here at 7 o'clock. When we pray, we stay alert. Can I get an amen? Amen. Then you got four. It's going to be here Wednesday night with Pastor Joseph. You got something special this Wednesday night? It's a costume party. A co you, you got any uh, instructions on the costume? Yeah, I think that's smart. Get that mic on over there. Yes, yes. yes. yes uh, of course, everybody needs to dress as a costume, obviously. We'll have a little contest with that. And then we're doing a, a, a pumpkin, a forge themed pumpkin contest. So bring it pre carved uh, to the, and then we'll have games and we'll have a Bible study. It's, it'll just be fun. All right, 7 o'clock Wednesday night. 7 Amen. 8 so, se, se, what time? 7 to 8.30. 7 to 8.30. All right, so make sure the young people get out to be a part of that. Did y'all get an offered envelope? You already filled that out? All right. As we give today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours, benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor, and success to the kingdom of God. Amen. We will have a trunk or treat. There's one reason I'm preaching on this to help you understand something here, but we will have that out at the ranch uh, out in New Caney at the little country church there, October 31st from 7 to 8. Again, we're asking for costumes. Six to eight, my bad. I see it now. But if you want to be a part of giving out to candy, be there by between 5 and 5.30. Amen. So you got to get there early so we can get you parked. Uh, wear a costume that's, uh, don't do no devil stuff. And when they show up dressed like devils, don't be mean to them. Amen. Just, just learn how to deal with them and, and, uh, and realize there's spirit behind a lot of this stuff. But I refuse to fall head over into all of that. I want to give our kids a secure place to come. And get candy, amen, a place that, uh, there's a lot of wicked stuff that's going to take place that night. It's like, and it, it, can I tell you, the one person that hates, this is going to shock you, the one person that hates Halloween is Satan. Because it exposes him. He would love to live life, the rest of it, without being exposed, without people knowing. Amen. That's how he's deceived so many. So that night, we'll be aware. Come out to the ranch. Help us out with that. Amen. Uh, don't forget to pick up some church merch, some things in the back. Just a little announcement there. We got good stuff. I love, I love being at the uh, Fields of Faith uh, Tuesday night and look out and see so many people. We had young people from here show up out there, which was great. And uh, a lot of them wearing their uh, Forge and little country church shirts. That's good stuff to represent. Amen. All right. So you know what we got going on. I hope to see y'all next Sunday. If you're not here, I've already had people say, Pastor, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be at, but they've already sent me messages because they want to make sure that if I'm looking out and they're not here, they're still for me. So I appreciate that. Amen. That's kind. Pastor Dave, would you come up and close us in prayer? Amen. Yeah, that was a good word, Pastor. Appreciate that. And the fact that, you know what, guys, like he said, um, my enemy is...